Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Creative Cow tutorial. And in our ongoing look at learning Avid's Media Composer and Symphony, got another question from a viewer that I think warrants a tutorial. It's from Marcus, and Marcus says, Hey, first up, thanks for all the great lessons. They've been a great help in my progression with the program. I wanted to know how do I have the projects that I create available for online viewing? I create music videos for local artists and I have them perfect in the program, but I don't know how to take them out to give to my clients. Is there a video that you have done already that can help me with this? Thanks, Marcus. Well, Marcus, you ask, I answer. And in this lesson, I'm going to take a look at how we can export files from Media Composer and Symphony to have them ready as either an approval file or as a final end product for you to send to your clients. Okay, short introduction here. Let's just get into Symphony and let's get started. Okay, so let's command tab into Avid Symphony, obviously Alt and Tab for all my Windows friends out there. And the first thing I'm going to need is a sequence to work with. So why don't we just create something quick here? Nothing too fancy. I'm just going to take some motocross footage here. I'll just pick a few shots here. I'm just I've already got some in and out points marked, so I'm just going to create a new bin here. And what I should have just done was open my sequences bin here. So why don't I just do that? I'll put my sequences here. I'll just drag this over here. I can now delete this bin here. See you later. There we go. Perfect. Okay. And we're going to call this sequence appropriately enough for client approval. And what we're going to do here is I'm going to just close this clips bin because all the clips I get, I'm going to get from my motocross bin here. There we go. And I've already got a bunch of in and out points marked on some of these shots. And we're not going to take anything too long here. Now, I know right away by seeing the yellow in my timeline that these clips don't match the resolution of my current sequence. And that's okay. Let's just switch that up to be 720p, 23.976. There we go. We're all good to go. And I need a few more shots here. So I'm just going to come back to my motocross footage here. Let's just call up a few more shots. Perfect. I already got the in and out point marked. A B on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows. And you can see, I can see by the in and out points here which shots already have the in and out points done. So let's just drop a bunch of them in here just to create a sequence here. Nothing too fancy. Okay. Now I think I may have actually dropped that shot in there twice. I did right there. So let's just remove that. I think I'm actually okay with what I have here. This is about 26 seconds, 26 and a half seconds. Okay. So what I want to do now is I want to take this. And we're just going to say hypothetically that this is good. I'm happy with this. I'm ready to export this. Now what we're going to do is we're going to send an approval to our client. Now obviously you can take what I'm going to show you for creating the approval files to send to your client. You know, and obviously take that and switch it into something like you want to post it on a website in a higher resolution or something like that. Obviously, you can take what I'm going to show you and just scale it up just a little bit. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is I need to mark an in and an out point to mark my entire sequence here. And I obviously do not need the audio, so let's just delete that. There we go. And again, I'm just going to make sure I have my video track selected. I'm simply going to select the sequence. I'm going to right click and I'm going to say export. Now, we're actually going to go over this in two ways. The first way is dealing with progressive footage. That's the type of footage I'm working with right now. Now, it's based on whether you're using progressive footage or interlaced footage. Now, to start out, we'll use the progressive footage example. So the first thing I'm going to do is make sure that I'm on my desktop here. And most people just think that I'm going to export this same as source. The only problem with doing that, what I'm going to do here is just switch over to same as source here. QT, same as source, video only. We'll just call this for client approval, full. And I'm going to say go. So we're going to save that out. You'll see it exports pretty quickly here. I'm just going to hide Symphony here. I'm going to take the clip on my desktop here. I'll just hit the space bar here, and there it is. But what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to right-click on this clip and say Get Info. Because right now you'll see this clip is 300 megabytes big, a little bit too big to email to a client. Now, like I said, we want to make approval files for the client. So in this case, what I'm going to do is this is 1280 by 720. I'm actually going to make it half that. I'm going to make it 640 by 360. So what we're going to do is we're going to Command Tab or Alt Tab for my Windows friends back in the Symphony. Again, come back over to our sequence window. I'm going to right click and say Export. What we're going to do is create a new export setting. I'm going to click on Options. What we're going to do in this case is not a same as source, not use the Avid Codex, but we're going to do a custom export. Now, as soon as I click Custom Export, most people think they're going to come over here to the Format Options, but we're not going to do that. The first thing I'm going to do is say Use Marks, meaning use my in and out points, and I'm going to use the Enabled Tracks, meaning if I have Video 1 selected, that's what's going to export. If I got Video 1 and 2 selected, that's what's going to export. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is jump right down here to Width and Height. Now, I said before 640 by 360. 
and we're just going to size to fit. I'll just leave the color levels as RGB because that's what I imported this clip as. And we're going to leave the display aspect ratio as the native dimensions. Now what we're going to do is we're going to export this clip as an H.264 file. So what I want to do now is I want to come into the format options. I'm going to come first of all to the video settings here. And the compression type that I want to select is, appropriately enough, H.264. I'm going to have the keyframe set to be automatic. The frame rate is going to be the current, meaning whatever Symphony or Media Composer has it set as is what we're going to be exporting. I'm going to simply set my compressor here to be the best quality. We'll leave the encoding as best. But what I'm going to do here is instead of having an automatic data rate, I'm going to restrict the data rate to be about 1,000 kilobits. I think that's pretty good. And I'm going to say OK. Now in this case, I don't have any sound, so I'm just going to disable that. I'm going to leave filter because I don't, don't actually have any filters that I need to put onto this footage. In size, we're going to leave it as the compressor native. I'm going to say OK. We can leave prepare for internet streaming selected. And I'm going to say OK. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a save as. I'm going to call this appropriately enough H264. I'm going to say OK. I'm going to say save. We're going to go back to the desktop. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tag this as being H264. I'm going to say go. And you're going to see that the export now is going to take you know, quite a noticeable amount of time difference between what we had just done and what we're doing now because basically we're actually transcoding this clip to H.264. Now, you know, it's about 26, 27 seconds long and obviously your time's going to vary based on the type of system you have. In this case, I'm using an iMac i7, 32 gigs of RAM. So it sort of gives you an idea, you know, I have a powerful system here. And it's taking a little bit to export this. But what I'm going to do just for the purposes of the tutorial is I'm going to speed this up a little bit. You see it says it's going to take about three minutes. But we're just going to speed time up a little bit here just so that it's going to finish right about now. Okay, and what I'm going to do is just simply hit Command and H on the Mac. For all my Windows friends, you can just minimize Media Composer or Symphony. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come over. Now, this was the original clip that I exported, same as Source. Obviously, 1280 by 720, 300 megabytes big. Now, take a look at the H.264 clip that I exported. Very, very nice. And the most important thing about this clip is instead of being 300 megabytes big, you can see that it's only 3.6 megabytes big. Now what's important to keep in mind is when I exported this, I obviously shrunk the size of the frame down to be 640 by 360, but in reality, I could have left it as 1280 by 720. The only thing that's important to keep in mind is that the Obviously, the larger you keep the frame size, the more the frame size stays the same as the frame size you're currently working with in Media Composer Symphony, the higher you're going to want to have the bit rate. I have this at, at about, you know, 1,000K per second. If I was going 1280 by 720, I'd probably have it at about 2,500 to 3,000. Uh, K per second. So just something you should obviously keep in mind when you are working. Okay, now that's basically as simple as it is to make client approvals using progressive projects. But let's talk about doing this with interlace projects. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take both of these elements. I'm going to drag them right down here to the trash. I'm going to delete them. And I'm going to command tab back into Avid Symphony. And we're just going to switch projects here. Okay, let's navigate all the way down to the bottom here to my stock footage 1080i project. What I'm going to do is just launch the project here. I'm going to open the sequences bin. I'm going to open the stock footage bin. And let's just grab some shots of elephants here. Let's just find some shots that already have some in and out points marked. What I'm going to do with this shot, again, hit B on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows. I'm just going to deselect the audio here because I don't want the audio. Stick that back in the sequences here. There we go. Sure, why not? Let's just undo that because, again, don't want the audio. There we go. And let's just find one more shot here. Maybe even that shot's not too bad. What I want to do is just get the sequence about the same length here. So we might need one more. And sure, why not? Let's drop that in. That puts us at about 27 seconds, which is pretty darn close. So what I'm going to do is just delete the audio tracks here because I do not need them. And we're just going to mark this entire sequence because you'll remember when I exported before, I'm just going to right click, come down to export. I'm going to come into my options here. You'll remember before I had use marks selected, so it's going to use the in and out point that I've marked in my timeline to use that region to export. Now when I come back into the export settings, you're going to notice that I now have another option in here that I didn't have before, which is, appropriately enough, the file field order. Now in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick with the field order that I had with the original footage, which is upper field first. You see that I have upper field, which is obviously for HD, even field, which is lower field first for SD, or single field. I'm just going to stick with the odd upper field first. What I'm going to do again is just simply hit save. We'll just call this one, why not we'll just call this elephants. We'll call this elephants H264. Appropriately enough, what I'm going to do is simply come over and say save. 
Now again, what's important to keep in mind about this footage is that it is HDV 1080i, 1920x1080, that we're now shrinking down to that 640x360 timeline. Now you can see the clip is exporting here, and it's probably going to take, you know, again, about a minute and a half to two minutes. So I'm just going to speed up time here again, just for the purposes of this tutorial, so that we can keep working. Okay, and you can see about 2 minutes and 15 seconds is what it took to export that clip. What I'm going to do again, Command and H on the Mac. Minimize, obviously, for my Windows friends out there. Here is my Elephants H264. I'm going to right-click, say Get Info. And you can see that this clip is, again, 3.8 megabytes big. So you can see, it obviously is irrelevant how big the original file is. At the end of the day, when we're shrinking this down to 640 by 360, you're looking at about the same file size, just short of 4 megabytes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to this clip again, simply hit the space bar here on the Mac, and you can see that this clip is looking pretty darn good. Now most people might think that we, we'd be wrapping up this tutorial at this point, but we're not going to do that because I like to always take things to the next level to show you guys things that you might not think about when you're working in the edit room. And here's the situation. So there's some editors out there that work on segments for shows, multiple segments. You could be working on five, six, seven segments in a show for like in the span of one day. And what's going to happen is you want to get in, you're going to need to be sending client approvals uh, pretty much in all these segments. And the last thing you want to do is get to the end of the day and you're stuck doing all of these exports from Media Composer Symphony. So how can we get this set up so that we can not only A, export our clips super quick, but B, then get into maybe a third-party application like Sorensen Squeeze to process all these in one big batch. Now I know you're thinking to yourself, well, Kev, well, hold on a second. You know, I don't have Sorensen Squeeze, so why are you showing this to me? Well, guess what? By making your purchase of Media Composer 6, you already got Sorensen Squeeze for free. All you have to do is download it and enter the license code that was emailed to you when you first made your purchase. So let me show you how this works. What I'm going to do is Command Tab back into Symphony, and instead of exporting this as an H.264 file, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click, I'm going to say export. We're still going to go to the desktop. I'm going to call this Elephants, well, maybe we'll call this Elephants Segment 1, because we might have, you know, 10 segments here. Segment 1. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come down to my options. I'm going to come up to export as, and instead of a QuickTime movie, I'm going to export this as a QuickTime reference file. What I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it as digital mastering settings. We're going to let it flatten video tracks, fill spaces with black, render all video effects. The display aspect ratio is 16 by 9. And for a QuickTime reference file, you need to have audio associated with it. So I'm just going to leave all of this information down here at the bottom exactly the same. I can use Avid Codex if I want to and use Network Media References if I need to. And I can also set the color levels. I'm going to leave everything on their default. What we're going to do is say Save As. I'm going to call this QT Reference. What we're going to do is simply say Save. We're going to go back to the desktop and I'm going to call this QT Ref. We're going to come down. I'm going to say Save and you'll see that literally in about two seconds it looks like something's happened, but I don't, that, there's no way that exported that quick. What I'm going to do is simply hide Symphony and you'll see that on the desktop I have something called Elephant Segment 1.move and look at this. It's actually that clip exported onto my desktop. Well, this is fantastic. What I could probably just do is take this and email this to my client. What I'm going to do is right-click and say Get Info, and take a look at that. It's only 8 kilobytes big. Awesome. I'm going to email this to the client. You take this file, you email it to your client. The client says nothing comes up. This doesn't play back, and you get really confused and wonder what's going on. What this basically is, is just a shortcut to the media that's on my media drives. Without the associated media on your client's computer, they're not going to be able to play back this QuickTime reference file. Ah, but here's where you can see where this will really benefit you. You saw how quick it was for me to export this QuickTime reference file. 30 seconds exported in about one second. So if you had, let's say, an hour-long show, you could export that as a QuickTime reference file onto your desktop. Or even if you're working with, let's say, five-minute little chunks, you could export all these onto your desktop as QuickTime reference files. Now, obviously, because mine doesn't have any audio, it's relatively small. Once audio starts being added into it, obviously, the file size will get a little bit bigger. But guess what? It's still going to cut way down on the size of the files that are exported from Media Composer and Symphony as opposed to using same as source. Now, here's where this comes into play with Sorensen Squeeze. What we're going to do here is I'm just going to close my Get Info window here, and let's Command Tab into Sorensen Squeeze. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to minimize Squeeze a little bit here. It's a little bit too big for my liking. 
I always like to have it a little bit smaller so that I can see the desktop here. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take my QuickTime reference file. I'm simply going to drag it and drop it right over here into Squeeze. And you can see there is my video just the way I had it in Symfony ready to go. What I want to do is I want to export a client approval for this. So what I need to do is first of all create a preset for that client approval. No problem. I'm just going to come over here to the little plus icon to create a new item. And I'm going to create a new QuickTime.mov. You'll see I'm brought to the preset window. What we're going to do is we're going to leave the codec as main concept H264. I'll leave the uh, compression type as one pass variable. We'll leave the frame rate as one to one. The target, you'll remember, much like I had it inside a symphony, is at a thousand kilobits. In this case, what I can do is constrain the maximum data rate. So the maximum data rate is 160%. Obviously, this is because we're working with a variable bit rate compression type. The frame size, what we're going to do is we're going to maintain the aspect ratio, but instead of having it as 640 by 480, which is 4 by 3, I want it 640 by 360. Now in this case, what I'm going to do is just add audio in here. It doesn't really even matter if I have it or not in this case, because what I want to do is I want to make sure that when I export files in the future, if they happen to have audio, I can just take this one preset and drag it and drop it right on top of it. So what we're going to do here, set the data rate to be 128. I'll set the sample rate to be 4800. The, ch the channels will be stereo. Now the only thing that's important in this case actually is if I come into filters, I'm going to want to add a deinterlace filter because this footage is interlaced. And if you took a look at it when I played it back, actually I can do that right here from the desktop, you're going to see that as the ears move here, we've got a little bit of banding going on. That's the fielding that you see there. So what we want to do is when we export this out of Sorens and Squeeze, I want to get rid of that banding, which is, this is how we do it with deinterlace. So all I'm going to do now is simply come up here. I'm going to rename this. We're going to call this H264 with audio interlaced. What I'm going to do is simply say OK, and that preset's going to appear over here inside of my favorites. Now all I have to do to process this element out of squeeze is simply take the preset and instead of dragging and dropping it right onto the clip here, I'm going to assume that I had taken multiple clips and dragged them all in here. And let's say I have 10 or 15 of them set to go. What I'm going to do is simply just take that preset, grab it over here and drop it onto the global job settings, which would then apply it to every item in here. I'm simply going to say squeeze it and you're going to see that what's going to happen in this case because I'm only exporting one file, we're only going to be exporting one thing, but if we had multiple files in here, what would happen is it would literally go through each item inside a squeeze, process them out onto the desktop, which is where the original file came from, and then basically this file will be ready to email to my client. Now it's also very cool about this and what we'll do is we'll just let this finish doing its thing here. You can see it's relatively quick as well, actually quicker than it would be coming out of Media Composer or Symphony. And once it's done, you'll see on the desktop, these two items will disappear and only one will be left in its place. Right about here. There we go. What I'm going to do is simply click on this clip, hit the spacebar to preview it, and there's that same clip. Now it's probably going to be a little bit bigger than the other one was, only because I have audio with it as well. Actually, look at that, 3.5 megabytes, exactly the same size. Even though there was audio uh, selected over here, there shouldn't be any audio on the clip because I obviously didn't export any of it. Now, one thing I also want to point out that you're really going to love about Squeeze is the fact that there's presets. So let's say hypothetically I wanted to upload this to YouTube and I wanted to process a file that would be YouTube HD ready, no problem. What I can do is simply come over to the Workflow tab. I can come right down here to Web. You can see I can say, well, let's in this case have a destination. There's YouTube. And take a look at what I have in here. I'm just going to drag down a little bit here. I'm going to use H.264. Just drop that down. And look at this. I have a 240p, a 480p, a 720p, and a 1080p preset already ready to go. Simply drag and drop. And the cool thing is, is that what I can also do is come in here to my publishing options. I can take this YouTube publishing option, double click on it. I can enter my YouTube username and password and verify it. And what I can also do is drag this right back onto the clip as well. And not only will I process the file for YouTube, but Squeeze will upload it to YouTube or even my client's YouTube channel for me automatically. So I hope this tutorial has shown you how simple it is to get in and export not only client approvals, but also using the power of Sorens and Squeeze that you get when you make your Symphony or Media Composer purchase. You can create very cool high-res client approvals for YouTube really in no time flat. So if you have any questions, you have any comments, you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.
Dot com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.